Hello, everyone. This is Check Spotlight on March the 24th, 2021. And we are so happy to have as our guest today, Katie Teams Norris, who is the uh, coordinator for student support at the Office for Student Learning. That means Katie has so many things on her plate that we can't identify them, but we will identify the main items, which would be tutorial sessions and support of students in different situations, as well as SRS and even work with the peer mentor groups. So it's um, a great time to have Katie come talk to you because Katie's been here since August working with us at the OSL and and yet um, she's she's actually made her way through the morass of craziness and has been very effective with what she does in helping students and this is a good note for her uh, to, to get recorded on plus for new students who will be coming to New Mexico Tech. So Katie we welcome you and we're glad you're here. I know you got some sort of an introductory thing that you've created and uh, we'll let you go through that, uh, but you know, greet everyone and uh, then get into your spiel. Yeah, thank you, David. Uh, hi, everyone, and thanks for coming to Tech Spotlight. We have them every week. Um, I hosted through the peer mentor program, so uh, thanks for tuning in this week. And I've prepared a short presentation about what the OSL does for student success. So I'm going to go ahead and try to share that. You go for it. Right. Uh -huh. So as David said, I am the student support coordinator with the Office for Student Learning. And we are located in Skeen Library. You can see behind me and you can see, obviously I had to do the Bernie meme on top Bernie of Skeen. It up there, you know, I mean, there's been a green toilet up there and there's been other <laughs> up there. So why not Bernie? Why not? Yeah, so uh, it's, that's not what it looks like today. Obviously, there's a, a, a layer of snow outside, so it's a, a bit of a different scene. But, um, you know, normally without snow and without COVID, skiing libraries just hop in with students. Um, we, we're known for free coffee and popcorn Thursday and uh, what we've done putt putt in the library in the past. Yeah, we've had some very long putts. Yeah. I mean, some very long books. And oh. books, of course, but you know. <laughs> and then we've got a little outdoor area. We've recently added, um, it's got outlets for plugging in your computer. It gets Wi-Fi out there. Um, and we have recently done a couple of donut days. You may or may not have attended. And we've done some uh, popcorn days, and both of those were specifically to promote the Student Research Symposium, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but yeah, during normal times, Skeen Library is just a hub of student activity, so it's a good place to have the Office for Student Learning. So a little bit about the Office for Student Learning. We have three main programs, um, and the first and foremost that probably most people identify us with is our STEM tutoring. We have our tutorial center um, that's staffed by a team of trained tutors, and they each have uh, different majors and specialize in different things. We also coordinate with different departments to get TAs to offer their services as tutors as well. Um, secondly, we have our team of peer mentors, and this is distinct from tutoring. So rather than you know tutoring in, in academics, they are sort of the guides to students, new students and transfer students here. And then uh, our third program is, of course, the Student Research Symposium, which uh, you've probably seen emails about or have seen our website. Uh, so this is a really important event we hold each year. Uh, We're three weeks away right now. Yeah, it's only three weeks away. So it's happening April um, 14th through, through 17th. And uh, it's it's a big event. We have students present their research to the a general audience, and it's just a really great format to do that. So uh, we we really strive to be an all-around center for academic st student support programs and services that promote student engagement, development, and self-efficacy. So a little bit more on our tutoring. You can see 
here in this picture, this is the area in the back of the library where the OSL lives. And it's full of whiteboards and glass top tables. Uh, we've got plenty of textbooks. And then of course we have our computers and printers nearby uh, conveniently located. And it's, it's completely free to all New Mexico Tech students. And we don't have a limit on, you know, how many hours you can spend with us or how many times a week you can come. We just encourage people to, uh, to reach out for help and to seek the help that they need because there's no shame in doing that. And I actually think that, you know, learning how to ask questions and learning how to ask for help and take control of your own success is a real asset. Uh, so we also host the math and physics extravaganza and uh, coming up we're expanding that into a study extravaganza at the end of the semester so we're planning on having uh, departments offer reviews and instruction as well as ta review sessions and it'll be completely virtual and we hope that that will be a big benefit to students uh, but in the past and i'm hoping in a post-COVID future, uh, we'll open it back up again and it will be filled with people and we'll have food and drinks just like in old times. People can have all kinds of sodas and juices and uh, chips and vegetables or whatever, you know, and then just have a good time and do the review sessions. Um, and we also offer workshops through this program, like uh, the last one that we did was a LaTeX workshop and uh, we're open to doing more workshops in the future. So moving on from that, we are virtual right now for tutoring. Um, and since COVID-19 began, we quickly transitioned all of our tutoring online. Um, and one thing we noticed is that a lot of tech students were hanging out on Discord. So we thought, why not offer drop-in tutoring on Discord? Um, and we worked with the math department to help them out over winter break even. So we expanded our services even further to them. And uh, we, we also offer summer tutoring and we have a pretty wide range of availability in general. It's 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. except on Fridays. And then Sundays we have evening tutoring. Um, so we're looking at the possibility of going to do in-person and online tutoring in the future. And then hopefully, um, you know, definitely in the fall, we're looking more to expanding more of those in-person services in the library in general. Um, and we're right now we're, we're doing most of our tutoring by appointment and that's been helpful for some folks. And then we've also, for the other folks, we've still got our Discord active and up and running. And um, we've got math TAs that are on at all hours of the day pretty much to offer the uh, their services as tutors. So we've got peer mentors and they really commit themselves to creating a welcoming and safe environment for first year students and transfer students. Um, a peer mentor is sort of like a role model, sort of like a friend, sort of like just a guide to life here at Tech. Um, they're a really good point of contact for faculty or other students, clubs, or other sort of support services on campus. Uh, because we realize that even though we're a small campus and we're a relatively small school, um, it's still sometimes tough to know where to go and who to speak to. And uh, sometimes people are nervous. And so we realize having a peer mentor there to facilitate that is uh, is extremely important for a lot of people. Um, and of course, it, it helps to establish a sense of belonging. They have meetups and all kinds of social times. And I think someone had even created a, a peer mentor Minecraft server. So there, there's just all different ways that they interact. And I know recently one of the peer mentors um, baked cookies for all the mentees in the group and offered cookies to anyone who wanted them. So uh, they're getting really creative. And again, when we phase back into more in-person interactions, it's just gonna keep getting even better.
So we also, through the Peer Mentor Program and the library, we host Tech Spotlight, like today, uh, Ask Tech Anything, which if you're familiar with, with the uh, Ask Me Anything tag on Reddit, um, it's similar to that. It's a chat Q&A session that we do through our Peer Mentor Discord um, Tuesday Tech Trivia. Uh, I'm not sure when the last time was we offered that, but I know we, we sometimes do trivia. Um, and of course, like I said, they've got game nights for the mentors and mentees, one-on-one -on -one meetups, group meetups, and uh, it's encouraging. Things are starting to open back up. I think Socorro County um, is doing pretty well compared to a lot of counties. And I know recently our Loma Theater opened back up for some limited screenings of Wonder Woman and Tom and Jerry movie. So it's encouraging to know that uh, a lot of the students here are going to have more and more opportunities. Uh, perhaps in, in, you know, it's it's good being rural in many ways because uh, we're able to do more in-person activities probably faster than um, some areas that are more affected by COVID-19. Um, but of course, you know, virtual interactions are are definitely a reality, and uh, they've definitely been an asset. Okay, so Student Research Symposium. Um, it's coming up fast. It's in about three weeks, so April 14th through 16th. And then we've got a socially distanced golf tournament on the 17th, so that'll be a lot of fun. Um, and, and it's an annual event, and it's open to the larger STEM community. Uh, and it's uh, also, you get school children and general audiences that come to look at the uh, research that our students are doing. And one of the great things about New Mexico Tech is how involved our students are in research. And they get to be involved uh, even as freshmen. I've met many students who are involved in research as freshmen, and then they, uh, they have so many opportunities throughout their career here. And the Student Research Symposium is like a conference and it's just a really wonderful way for people to get experience in conference style presentations. We have the three minute speech competition, which is a lot of fun and it's uh, modeled after like an international three minute speech competition. We have oral presentations, which are typically held along with a dinner. And then we also have our poster presentations. So typically people can go around and look at the posters and interact with the presenters one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, this year we're doing it virtually and we, we're having different Zoom rooms and uh, you know, posters will be posted onto our website uh, on this student research, web, research symposium website, which is nmt.edu slash SRS. And even though it's virtual, uh, I think a lot of people are still going to be able to get so much good out of it. Plus, also, that means it's opened up to an even larger audience, an even larger uh, community who can interact and participate than even it was in person. So that's very exciting. And the focus, of course, is, is learning by doing, uh, communicating to educate. Um, and, and those are the, the real focus here. So, oh, and this year, I forgot to add, we, we have added departmental showcases. Um, so design clinics and different departments are getting together to showcase some of their projects. So that's another exciting thing going on that's new this year. But if you have any questions, I have our, our SRS email at the bottom, and then uh, we also have our website. So we'll be updating that. So as you can see, I've got pictures from the in-person events, and it's really just a fun time. And um, so many students have really benefited from this. And if you want to, you know, learn any more about how specifically students have benefited, we've been posting a lot of videos of past participants to the OSL Skiing Library Facebook, and also our Instagram. And I've got those handles at the end, so make sure to check those out. So here's the 
our Facebook, Twitter handle, Instagram, and we recently got a YouTube, so we're posting all that content and all of the past tech spotlights to our YouTube channel as well. And of course, nmt.edu slash OSL is our website. And that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions. You're open for questions at yeah. all, right? Okay. Anybody got some questions for Katie on this one as we as we do a little segue? Here we go. A little segue into other things. Uh, if you don't give her some, I'm going to give her some. <laughs> She's nervous about that. So what can I say? Sometimes, uh, Katie, we have, have our presenters tell us something unique or uh, weird or uh, outstanding that they have done or like doing in the midst of their not only uh, professional work here at uh, NMT, but in personal life. So, um, I mean, I have a list of things. I understand okay. that uh, you are uh, an aficionado of ghosts and you are an expert on ghost tours. Uh, you want to talk to us about that part of your life so that we can understand you a little better? Yeah, so that was one thing that was uh, unexpectedly helpful in my career so far is the fact that I got to do ghost tours starting from a young, pretty young age, straight out of high school. And uh, I, I led historically based ghost tours in the city of Marietta, um, which is, you know, close by to uh, Civil War about a couple of Civil War battlefields um, and all kinds of all kinds of history. Sherman's March to the Sea went straight through there, and, and uh, so it was fun to be able to combine my my love of history and uh, to be able to get public speaking skills and interact with all sorts of characters. Have you have you talked to a ghost before? I find they don't really talk back much. And if they do, I'd be a little concerned. <laughs> a little freak. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, the library does have its ghost at the front door lobby. It, uh, the doors will open and close all on their own. We know that it's due to wind, but ghosts like the wind. And so uh, we've been talking about Katie having some sort of ghost tour here. I also believe there's a ghost <laughs> down in the archives because there's a lot of notes down there, and I do believe that people who have been with us in our ghosts now are checking their notes. But uh, other than that, we 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 uh, we laugh with Katie a little bit about how she could do a ghost tour for everybody, and uh, that could be a little bit of fun. So uh, uh, you might want to check in with Katie a little later on in her career here to see if she continues the ghost tours. Well, don't let that scare you off from coming to the library, because I I promise it, the ghosts will not bother you. No, they won't. <laughs> they usually are very interested in study, and I, I kind of like the 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 ghost in uh, uh, Ghostbusters who's in the library, who scares the you know, uh, different people, and and certainly wants you to be quiet. And since it's on the floor that there's not quiet, that we think our ghost is uh, lurking. Uh, you you need to be able to engage. So, other questions from anybody, Sarah? I'm going to punch you first. Since you you seem to be very cognizant of different things uh, that happens at OSL, you got a question for Katie? Go ahead, Sarah. You can do this. Sarah is trying to be quiet. Mm -hmm. I'm not understand. I'm sorry. I, I had to run to the restroom. Oh well, <laughs> that, um, that's a that's an in you know some sort of a. <laughs> Involuntary disclosure. Do you have something? Yeah. That you ask? Yeah, it cannot be avoided. Um, yes. What's your favorite thing about your position? Okay, so my position's interesting because normally, if it you know if it weren't a circumstance during COVID, I would get to interact all the time with tutors and students, and uh, I still get to have some interactions with the tutors, and I. I think my favorite part probably is those one-on-one -on -one interactions with with the tutors um, and of course i get very limited reaction with uh, interactions with the students now but um, i'm hopeful for the future and i'm i'm sure that would be uh really fun to just be able to see how the osl is actually benefiting them um so i look forward to that yeah 
I understand that you actually, upon coming to Socorro, not only in its rural uh, nature, okay, but the fact that there's plenty of places to go and do things all around Socorro and the surrounding area. Uh, I, sorry, Ryan, I'm going to pull you in on this too. Uh, yeah, you guys have enjoyed some of the uh, venues for getting out into nature. Talk to me about that. I know you like that. So talk yeah. to me. Yeah, there, there's a lot to do here. And I think because people think it's rural, um, there isn't much to do. And for some things, they're right. Um, Albuquerque is an hour away and it's, it's not that long a drive. So if you want to get more of the nightlife for that, you can. Um, but socorro has got some nightlife too. We've got a pretty robust local music scene from what I understand. We've got food trucks, um, amazing restaurants. I'm a shameless plug for, uh, this is not sponsored by the way, but uh, Sophia's Burrito Time. Uh, if you oh. haven't had one, you need to try it's one. Pretty good, okay. Yeah. yeah, I promise this video is not sponsored by Sophia's Burrito Time, but. Uh, but they will not mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, and hiking, of course, we, we love to hike. And thanks Ryan for, for being here. Um, but we've been making our way around different trails and all the public lands because we're really surrounded in Socorro by public lands. Yeah. Are you much of a birder, you or Ryan? Are you guys birders? Because uh, since since there is a great deal of, you know, like U.S. US Game and Wildlife Reservation land, plus uh, Sablata up to the north and Bosque to the south are huge birding areas. Have you enjoyed that? We've really enjoyed watching the birds, and so is my cat. We actually took the cat out um, on, a leaf? on a ride. No, we, we just <laughs> took her in the car, and uh, we pulled up next to one of the, um, the shallow ponds where all the cranes were, and she just loved looking at them. So he was very attentive. Yes. So we, we haven't really been birders in the past, but it's hard not to be here. And so it, just seeing all of them and all the different varieties really makes me want to learn more. It's just beautiful. And I do think that there is a separate time, uh, not only for the winter birds with the waterways that come open in the different places, but there's also the summertime. You know, spring and summer have their own sets of birds as well as the fall. Uh, you know, and I, I've kind of got excited about that by being chased by wild turkeys out. <laughs> places. Um, oh, don't mess with them. Oh, yeah, but they're around. And uh, uh, you'd mentioned the sand cranes are very big, as well as a number of other things like different types of ducks and geese. Um, uh, I do note that there are uh, displays of, uh, which might shock people, of, of being on this, this flyway, not only for the bigger birds, but even for small birds, like hummingbirds are very big around here. Uh, they, it's one of the flyways for them and one of the migration zones uh, in, in the, the summertime for birds that come up through Mexico, as well as uh, bluebirds that tend to be in the mountains, uh, other types of birds as well. So I'm sure your cat will like this. They, they will think that this is their heaven and hopefully they don't get out of your car because I'm sure that they can get <laughs> Yeah. I'm certainly looking forward to the hummingbirds too. I, I absolutely love them. And there are so many varieties that come through here. And there's so many of them too, that they're, they're not even that shy. No, no, not anymore. I think we've become a real uh, friendly place for them. Outside of Sophie's window, Sophie is here, Sophie Bauer. Uh, and uh, she actually has a hummingbird nest that has been used, at least for the amount of time I've been here for hummingbird mamas. And they become very protective, but it's it it's on a branch that goes out over what we we call our tiger pit uh, at the library, uh, where where in that area uh, there's not really any people most of the time, but also it's a safe zone because it's pretty hard for cats or anything else to get out there. So uh, we have our own little babies that we get to watch, and uh, that's exciting. There's also owls in the trees. Uh, which is some of you might think poor hummingbirds, but they've been left alone. There's owls and trees to the, I know, to the trees south of Kramer Hall. And uh, that, they're always fun to go check out and things like that. Um, so lots of fun that way. Um, 
anybody else have some questions for Katie? Because, you know, she, she likes to talk and yet she wants to have a reason to do it. So <laughs> please, uh, please uh, give her a question. Anybody got some questions? I know you touched on this a little bit, but what would your advice be to people who are afraid to seek out tutoring for whatever reason or nervous about, you know, asking for help or uncomfortable with the idea of tutoring? What What is your advice for those students? Thank you. Yeah, and you're right. That's a big thing I've noticed on campus and then interacting with some students is that a lot of students aren't used to uh, going to tutoring. They're not used to the process and maybe they're a little bit nervous about asking for help. And I think right now is the best time for those people who are nervous to give it a try because it's completely virtual. It's completely anonymous. And, um, you know, tutoring's not just for people who are really struggling. It is, it is for those folks, but it is also for the folks who um, wanna be proactive and make sure that they're staying on track and on top of things. Um, so it's a good space for that too. But, but I say, if you're nervous, um, try it now while it's virtual and you can also do group tutoring so bring a friend who's in your class go together uh, you, you don't even have to go to correct any mistakes go to work on homework you can go to study you can go to you know just ask a handful of questions that maybe came up in class um, and and definitely encourage you to take advantage of that yeah so i mean some people might think that uh, if that's all they're doing, is that is that a good use of the tutor? And my answer to them would be yes, because the tutor is pretty well knowledgeable on topics as well as other issues. So that's helpful. Talk about WC Online because we just started that, Katie, uh, and this is this is something that really helps. I think both tutors and uh, tutees or students get matched up. Talk about that. Okay, so before we had done drop-in appointments and there seemed to be a need or at least a want from some folks for appointment-based tutoring. So where they could have the ability to schedule in advance with a specific tutor that they wanted to work with. And WC Online was originally designed for writing centers. And I, I used it in the past. Uh, I formerly, uh, when I went to Georgia State University, I worked at a writing center as a tutor there and I loved the platform and it had a really good virtual tutoring module. And so we adapted it to use for the OSL. And so it's it has a bunch of, you know, it has the names of the tutors along the sides. It has the different times that they're available. And if you click on a slot, it'll show their picture, their bio, and then the classes that they feel comfortable tutoring. And so it's very easy to sign up, very easy to just make an appointment. And um, one of the things that's a real benefit to that is that our tutors previously, when they did drop in appointments, they didn't always, they didn't of course have the time to prepare as much as they'd like. So if there was a class that maybe they hadn't taken in a year and they wanted time to review a specific chapter or a specific concept, they weren't able to do that via drop in. But now with appointment based tutoring, uh, you can really develop a relationship with a tutor and that tutor can have time to prepare and. Uh, to over time, you know, develop a rapport and have a really nice working relationship in that way. So this this also makes it so that they can get a number of regular of hours with tutors, and um, so they can try to schedule ahead. And I know students don't always like doing that. I admit, but uh, they could also hit that that place if a tutor is waiting to to be able to start a tutorial session even forgive me for using this term, on a whim. I mean, they could say, you know, I wonder if I should talk to a tutor. Bang, they can get into that. It's so, it's so easy to schedule an appointment right then and there. And of course, uh, we do have TAs available on Discord throughout the day. And then we have our drop-in hours officially from five to seven during the week and three to five on Fridays. Mm -hmm. So. Tell me, tell me of all the events you've been at, or at least been associated with a tech during your time here, what, what's one of your favorites? Do you get a favorite yet? Um, anything involving donuts, probably. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Um, but other than that, I, I, <laughs> okay. I know I'm biased, but I really like the tech spotlights. I, I think it's a really great way to get to know what other staff members and faculty members on campus are doing. Um, one of my favorite ones was actually when Dr. Jones, uh, the geomicrobiologist, did a presentation about his research, and I thought it was just fascinating just mm -hmm. to know how uh, geology and microbiology really went hand in hand. Oh. And just to learn about all the, the research opportunities there are for interested students. I wonder if people get surprised when they realize the types of things we research here. Uh, there's certainly a lot of Department of Defense things. Emertech gets its share of those, but also there are physics uh, pieces that are very exciting, whether it's with the interferometer uh, that we have up at Magdalena Ridge. I think Ryan's really associated with that. Uh, the the other thing is is, is studies on, on lightning of all sorts of things. I mean, there's a, a lot of meteorological uh, physics uh, conversations that happen that way. Uh, I think uh, the one that, sh that really got to me was how much uh, hydrology and water study is done at uh, New Mexico Tech, not just hydrology when it comes to geological uh, types of processes, but uh, the, the, the study of water that's uh, uh, determining whether or not uh, there's a, like a flow of, of not only possible carcinogens, but also a flow of bio, biomedical types of things. One of the ones that fascinated me was the latent uh, byproducts that are in the water from um, things such as uh, 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 you know, antibiotics. Uh, that one really was interesting. Uh, and in the, the Rio Grande, uh, how that works or other, other water studies. There's water studies on uh, water that are, there's out in the golf course, for goodness sake. I mean, you know, like that type of thing. Uh, and uh, uh, as well as uh, the culture that, uh, the, the culture that, uh, that happens in uh, cave studies car studies. I mean, uh, I, I was just amazed about the, the number of topics. Of course, the SRS brings that out for a lot of people. Uh, and on animal uh, types of uh, uh, research, whether that uh, pertain to uh, uh, men's health, women's health, um, I, I just was had an eye-opening experience, at least my first year here, and still am amazed at all of the different research that's done. Uh, so the SRS is one of those places you can put your toes into that if you're a student or if you're wanting to know some of the ideas here. But uh, OS, OSL has really been a part of supporting people to get into research. And, and I like that as well. So anybody else got some concepts they'd like to talk about? We're trying to, we're trying to help, uh, you know, Katie here because she's, she, she's, uh, on the edge of all these things in her position with as being a coordinator of student support. Other questions that people have? Ryan, you can ask a question. Oh, I, I've got a question. Oh, good, sir. I hope it doesn't rub you the wrong way, David, but. Oh, why don't you? <laughs> okay, so if you had free reign, like total free reign, budget was no issue, <laughs> like, <laughs> what, what kind of programs would you want to see or, or put together for the students at the OSL because I've had visions of like going to the Denver Art Museum with the peer mentor group or something you know on a bus but you know that's never that's now we'll happen anytime right soon. up in Santa Fe but you know or yeah or Santa Fe you know I don't know why I chose the Denver Art Museum I don't know well, no no Denver's Santa a great, Fe. Place. great idea <laughs> Santa but Fe. you know all these things that you know I just have all these ideas but what are some ideas that, that you have or like if the sky were the limit I presume Gosh. you're asking Katie first. So go ahead, Katie. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah we can that's all a, share. <laughs> that's a tough one. Um, so there's so many things that we could do, obviously, with the sky is the limit. Um, the peer mentor program, I think, you know, doing more um, outings would be wonderful. Um, going out and in, in, into the Quebradas or going out on, on camping trips nearby, I think that would be a wonderful way for them to bond. Um, and really, I'd love to 
be able to coordinate more with other departments. I know right now things are a bit limited uh, because of coronavirus constraints and other constraints. So being able to integrate with say the writing center, for example, and with TAs from other departments and have this to really be a hub of learning and a hub of tutoring, I think that would be a wonderful thing. I know that doesn't sound very exciting, but no, it, it sounds, a little bit answers sounds, your question. It sounds, no, it, no, it sounds really exciting. I, I wish we had the time and the manpower to like have little, I don't know, to have a presence in all the departments. Yeah, and equipment's another a big thing as well. Yeah. Uh, we could definitely outfit our tutoring center with like smart boards and projectors. And you, and you have some certainly pieces even in the online that you use like that. Uh -huh. The online tutoring, we've got that rolling. One of the things I had as a vision, Katie, and I think I talked to you about this a long time ago, is that we have four uh, computers that want to, one of the things we call the dog bone. It's, it looks like a dog bone biscuit that's really uh, got four stations that could also have uh, what I call hubs uh, that people could come and work off of their laptops and plug into a system where we could have distance uh, conversations, perhaps with other uh, universities, where we would have a group here working on something in a distance learning uh, cooperative sense, and maybe we're talking to somebody from Texas Tech, or we're talking to somebody at Colorado School of Mines, or uh, maybe the Georgia Institute of Technology or Georgia State, okay, that maybe there's a project that we could organize around that type of conversation that the OSL would be a leader in all of a sudden. We'd be a leader in bringing some of our students who are very sharp on different uh types of topics and, and, and introduce them to groups studying them at other places. Um, uh, I'm, I don't know if that wets the whistle of someone like Ryan with the stuff that he does, but uh, certainly in other topics and other departmental uh, academics uh, that we could pull that off with our students. We could become a hub, uh, not only for the research that's done here, but a hub for other schools to uh, be able to access our research, access our students, and even our, our faculty in some sort of a program like that. Do you think you'd have any interest in that, Katie? Or so Well, you're right. There, there is so much to be done, so many ways to collaborate. And one of the things that springs to mind for me is broadband and how, uh, mm -hmm. of course, we don't have any say over that right now, but broadband is really uh, a utility and in order to do things like that, we definitely are we're looking towards, uh, and we are looking towards expanding fiber access in town. And uh, that way we'll have sort of this seamless connection and uh, we'll be able to collaborate more and, and um, it's doing good things for a lot of rural communities. And I'm really excited about the prospect of fiber being expanded in Socorro. And I do think that there's some some of a, our program here at UN at NM, you know, New Mexico Tech that reaches out to places like Magdalena, uh, which is a town. And if people don't know that, that's probably about oh, it's a good half hour away from us. But it 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 is a place where uh, because of our broadband, we've had conversations with with some groups that direction. Uh, one of the other things that I'm looking for, since we do have a strong broadband on campus, is, um, and I would think this would go into both your area, Katie, and Sarah's, is, is that I'm wanting virtual uh, reality uh, types of programming here. Uh, UNM, it's um, part of the reason I think I brought that up in, in that moment of weakness, uh, is... Um, has got at their what they call their Centennial Library branch, which is really uh, kind of a funky place because you go on to this courtyard area and it's got this kind of glass uh, entryway that you go down in underground for Centennial. Cent Centennial is actually all underground as, as a library, but they have a virtual reality area. And uh, I know Sarah was up there with me 
Uh, what I really liked was the fact that you could put the, you know, your virtual uh, eyes on, so to speak, and you could do um, anatomy. Human anatomy was in there. Uh, and it had a great anatomy thing where you could look at it. Also, they, even though it's a little old, they had Google Earth that you could be working with. I, I would think that there's probably many more programs out there if we created that virtual reality type of lab at the library and with OSL in the library for, for people to do things. I know virtual reality has been done in some engineering. Uh, also, you know, computer computer technology being what it is, there's a lot of laboratory things that can be done without uh, physical presence that you can use computer reality uh, labs that, that can create things. So uh, if I was gonna push you on something, I'd push you that way, you and Sarah and of course myself. And one of the things that we've allowed now at the library and and it's not necessarily doing anything with OSL, but it could, is the fact that we have uh, uh, sponsored a, a lab for drones, where they do a lot of different things in their little drone lab on our second floor to be able to determine uh, drone projects, uh, and also where high school students can, can become a part of a drone competition. But uh, Mustafa uh, Hassanalian, who's over in the mechanical uh, engineering department has really got a number of, of lab types of programs going on virtually uh, where they're also building uh, drones that are a part of NASA, a part of the, the Mars uh, projects, a part of dealing with Titan and Venus where they do a lot of what they, they call um, kind of a, a natural uh, world uh, study and they try to take some of the things in the natural world and put them into uh, drones so that they can uh, say like go across a, a landscape that's that's wind based or a landscape that has a lot of uh, methane, for example, with Titan uh, so that there can be re um, fueled uh, things. I mean, I would love for the library and OSL to get involved with that more hands-on as we get more uh, people back to to being able to see each other but also with that uh, community and uh, community education program so sorry I, my, my sites have some crazy things okay oh yeah. that's that's totally wonderful a lot of folks are learning a lot there's so many programs out there uh, for vr i know my my previous job in an electric cooperative there were many electric cooperatives that were just starting to use virtual reality to train linemen or to show the public what it was like working on the electrical lines. Um, and I've, I've heard about, you know, many schools doing virtual field trips. So it's another, just another wonderful way to get that information. Um, and, and just more on, on Dr. Hasnali and uh, he did talk for those of you don't, who don't know, he was a speaker at a previous tech spotlight and that's on our YouTube channel. So Yep. If you haven't seen it, that's where to go. Check into the YouTube channel because there's a great conversation with him as well. But I'm thinking OSL as we as we generate a little more back into people in the sense of real, you know, like real time settings that are actually with physical people together as well as the online and the virtual. Um, there may be programs uh, that we can help develop with it, uh, different engineering uh, departments on campus, as well as physics and uh, biology and bioinformatics uh, and chemistry. So I, th I think we may well continue with our tutoring as we do it, but I think we might be doing some virtual tutoring that could be a real kind of like uh, breaking edge. And I like the idea, so I'm hopeful that you're excited about that. So I'm not sure how Ryan would do something that way. Ryan, I'm picking on you, and I know you just don't talk very much to us when you're on. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking with uh, even with the interferometer stuff, that there may be some things virtual, virtually that we could link in with Magdalena Rich as well. So with you and with Michelle Creech Eekman who I think would want to try that too. I'm just not sure if that's something you get excited about or not, but you can you can at least say, yes, that'd be interesting or whatever, Ryan. 
And so this is your chance to have your five seconds on this on this uh, recording. So go ahead. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I think that does sound exciting. I have I can envision a couple of things um, that we could do that way. At the very least, um, you know, the inner the lab uses carts that move. So if we had a camera set up, people could see. Uh, well, depending on the time of day, they could they could get an idea. There could be a tour, a virtual tour type thing. I don't sure. think we could have them running while the telescope is operating because you need it to be dark. But um, yeah, there's there's ideas. That's 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 a really it's really exciting to think about. Um, if I saw edge. something right from uh, the uh, oh the magazine that comes out to the students, the pay dirt. You guys are talking about maybe a couple extra telescopes up there too that that could be incorporated into that virtual type of thing. Um, well, yeah, eventually we're going to have ten telescopes. That's our goal. So we'll have a ton of them up there. Sounds cool. Yeah, it'll be. It's it's a, it's a great project to be part Michelle, of. Yeah. Michelle and I are good friends, so I'm 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 poking at her and I'm poking at you to try to help us with OSO if that comes about. So. Okay. Yeah. That well. That ties to the, the, the one question I was going to ask if I ever needed to ask a question was well, um, was what can faculty do to assist the OSL? And I'm hearing a lot of different ideas here, so that's exciting. I, I think I think that we want to get into tutoring that's not just the old-fashioned one person with another on a on a on a topic that is, uh, let's say, in the beginning classes we have, which is certainly a value. But I think for, for Katie, like I'm saying, and for Sophia and, uh, and for Sarah and other faculty, there could be some neat virtual stuff and community stuff that could really have collaborative education, you know, starting a new direction. So I'm glad that you might have some interest in that, Ryan. So I won't put you on the spot anymore. How's that? Okay. So other questions anybody has for Katie today? Um, we, we have a, a, a good 12 minutes left we could do, or we could, we could end early and I'm not trying to give Katie a, a sense that she's going to get out of this, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. I would like to, to just say there's a lot of support on campus, not just the OSL. Uh, we also have the counseling center disability services. Uh, we have some physical education programs, community education programs. Uh, so there's classes in the arts and music that people can take. So it's it's not just, uh, you know, classes. Your life here at Tech, if you're thinking about coming to Tech or if you're a new student, it's not just about going to classes. There are so many other things to get involved in, fun things, and also uh, a lot of people like us who are more than willing to support you however we can. Now, wouldn't it be interesting to have a music tour? Yeah. yeah. No? A lightning tutor, I don't know. Um, stuff like that. Um, tech is an interesting entity. Now, it does have a lot of uh, I think inroads to many levels of study and enhancement, and uh, maybe uh, a little bit of a well, I guess uh, not only research but uh, a, a sense of adventure in the midst of that research. So, hopefully, that will be of something for everybody. Yeah, and it's it's a good thing to participate in research. So we have one of our student workers, and I'm going to single her out. Uh, Mel, she's here every week, and um, she just has has been a constant participant in the SRS, I think almost every year since she's been here. Started out her freshman year um, doing like explosives research, and this year she's researching like a, a um, almost like Raspberry Pi, I think, type robot yeah. that fills cracks in highways and, and other places. And she's she's done many different things, and she's gone out on her own, and she's um, just been able to interact with professors and really dive into projects. So that's that's one of the things is, you know, research projects are plenty 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 readily available 
they might not just land in your lap. Uh, you might have to talk to a professor, say a professor whose class you enjoy or who, who you know does research that you're interested in, and then just ask how you can help out. You can join a team um, and you might get started and figure out that you are really interested in that topic. And if not, you can move on to another topic after that project is done and mm -hmm. and just there are so many opportunities to really broaden your horizons here and discover what your interests are. I think I like the fact that there is uh, also the possibility here of getting into a five-year program where you get your BS and your MS in your fifth year of debt. That's a real, I think, value to students if that's something they are interested in. So, yeah. Well, Katie, I'm going to free you from having to, to keep talking. And I'm going to thank you for this time on Tech Spotlight. Good, everybody is gonna have one last chance for questions, okay? You got a question, ask Katie. And uh, we'll give you a, a few seconds to bring those about. Can't say that you didn't have the opportunity. One thing I wanted to add, I touched on this a little bit earlier, and uh, a lot of a lot of people have questions about when we're going to go back to in person, uh, be it the library or the OSL. And David, you could probably speak more about this, but we're really looking towards the fall, towards phasing things back to in person. Yeah, we are. Um, we have naturally been on more of an isolation protocol with all of our programming here at the library and have tried to with online access as well as some uh, physical uh, site access, tried to make it so that people could, could work and do what they needed to do, provide computers, do those types of things, have tutoring. But we really are looking in fall of uh, 2021, unless there's something on the horizon that we just don't see yet, of opening up ourselves again to more of a normal, if there is anything normal, uh, type of uh, physical opening and presence. Uh, I know that uh, our staff is very skilled at interacting with people and research, and we can do that virtually as well as uh, do it in person. But I do think the library has been, and OSL has been, um, a destination location, so to speak, on campus. And COVID kind of hit everybody hard. But um, but as we are presently, I, I learned today, and it was at our peer mentor meeting that we are in a turquoise state in um, in Socorro. We, we had enough green um, periods in a row and our numbers were such that we are actually in turquoise in Socorro and on New Mexico Tech campus. So. We're, we're moving quickly toward uh, an ability to open things up more. And so because of that, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to at least fall being a time when we will have more interaction with students in um, that one-to-one uh, -one or in group work. And uh, OSL is going to transform in that time as well. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We're starting to try to figure it out because I think for a lot of people in COVID-19, we have been uh, used to isolation now. You know, it, it hit us like a ton of bricks last March in March, 2020. And we all had to scramble to get to places where we were doing what we needed to do. And now we're gonna have to scramble to, to reintegrate that physical and that personal touch. So uh, please, please note that, that we're looking for that and we're planning on that. And we hope to see you as we do that, so. Katie, I'm gonna I'm gonna call us. Uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, this has been Katie Teams Norris. She's our coordinator for uh, student support, and uh, she's been with us since uh, August of 2020, and has really helped us uh, try to become uh, who we need to be in this uh, virtual time. But also, she has great skills and great skill sets to move us toward that time where we'll have more of an opening uh, at at campus here. Uh, for the uh, personal and for interaction personally. So 
Thank you, Katie, for being with us. And thank you, everyone who has uh, been a part of uh, this listening and, and questions. And I hope that um, for you, this has been an insightful and an enlightening time. And uh, please know that this recording will go up on our YouTube channel. And it'll be available on our Discord channel, especially for the 20 uh, 122 uh, new students. And so we're glad for that. And you might find the link uh, even on uh, Facebook and you might find the link on our website, all sorts of places. So know that uh, we're happy to have had you, Katie. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you again next week, everyone who would like to be a part of this uh, tech spotlight. Goodbye Thank for you. now. Thanks everyone. Okay, bye-bye. Hey, great job, Katie. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.